shows me, you know, not a light. It shows me an entire Fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it as like a what's that? The um, <laughs> uh, the the big uh, lights on the islands that for the ships uh, lighthouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. That's that kind of that kind of light showing people the way. Right, right. And I just feel like there was different energy all around when you stood up and you said that to her. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Joe, Dr. Energy Piazza. Rara is in the house. Catherine Asaro Myers. Welcome back to BU Network Podcast, conversations worth having. Well, Dr. Energy, we Mm -hmm. have a happy, joyful (laughs) moment and a happy, joyful episode episode tonight, but I want to talk a little bit about you and get into your head a little bit. Oh, scary place. Yep. (laughs) I want to go to uncharted territories. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. It's time. Our audience can get to know the real us. Let's (laughs) open the door. What's going on with you today, tonight, this afternoon, share a little insight as to what is the real deal with Dr. Energy? The real deal with Dr. Energy. I'm just, you know, uh, in the times that we're in, I'm just finding joy and ease in um, whatever it is I'm doing. You know, we've got a little extra free time here and there. So, you know, we can really focus on, you know, more podcasts on more um, BU network uh, information, getting some of our courses up there and and ready to go, which hint, hint, they're almost ready. I love it. And um, so, yeah, that's how I've been spending, spending the day today and just really working on, you know, things in the, in, on the back end of the business, you're working on the business rather than in the business today. And that goes not just for BU Network, but for my other businesses as well. So it's been, it's been a really, really good day. And I'm really in, enjoying doing that. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, thank, thank you for mm. sharing the insight I guess we can go a little deeper. So let me just pry Uh-oh. a little bit harder. <clears throat> I know that you're the active sportive type because mm. we have this yep. interest in mm-hmm. staying physical. Are you yes. remaining physical? Of course. I got a workout in today as well. And um, I was able to get outside and do some, do a little bit of shopping and, you know, topped up on my vitamin C and zinc mm, for to support yes. my immune system. And uh, so that was really, really good. To, and it was, it was a relatively nice day here in, in Ottawa as well. So it was nice to get outside and get some fresh air as well. Right. Awesome. I know you yeah. like that. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Thank you. And how about yourself? What's, what's going on in the mind of Rara? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm stepping up the game when Uh-oh. it comes to the 10-pound dumbbell. Uh-oh, so right now, go. yep, let me tell you what's going on because that was just small play. So mm-hmm. first of all, I'm in my bridge room right mm-hmm. now. And that's really awesome. I'm going to make some physical changes to where I record. But right now I'm in the bridge room. Right. Great time surrounded by different things. As you know, I knocked something over the other day, so I changed (laughs) But today we decided to sort of rebuild our home gym. So based on what's going on, and we like to get outside, we like to be physical, I like to go to classes, you know, there's a little bit of a shift in how things are going. So we have amazing Bowflex bench and Bowflex weight system. Right. And my 10 pound dumbbell is the staple in my in my bridge room. Right. But we are putting everything into one of the other rooms and putting a home gym in there. Home gym. Our version of what we have and the equipment that we have to go in that room and work out, which means nice. if there is no longer an elevator button that will be necessary, that's gone. Mm-hmm. We're going to walk right into the room with our mats, our yoga mats, the balls, the, the right. elastics, everything that we have. 
and we are going to do our workouts right there. And then of course we'll add our walks because that's what we can do. We do not want to miss a beat. And we think we were playing too small in the sense that it was great to go to the gym and use all the equipment, but we can't. So what are we going to do? Like we right. have to take this into our own hands. Exactly. I'm really empowered by this today because, you know, when you're on the same wavelength, like David and I looked at each other today mm. and almost at the same moment, he said, <laughs> I want to ask you something. And I said, I had something on my mind I wanted to tell you. He said, you go first. I said, no, you go first. And he said exactly what I was going to say to him. <laughs> Why don't we bring the equipment and turn one of the rooms into the gym? And I was like, yes, into the home gym, which makes it different. And yes, mm -hmm. we're going to look out the window and we're going to do that. So I'm nice. super excited. So today I'm pumped about that. Yep. And that makes me feel like really awesome because getting your physical outlets. Yes. Having, you know, having that outlet where it's not difficult to get to and you know that you can access it and you make it part of your day in your life. And in yeah. my bridge room, the 10 pound dumbbell was fantastic. It still is. I mean, I can still put one dumbbell in here and yeah. walk it to the other room, but I know I'm going to sit on the bench and I'm going to do what I, and it's a great incline decline bench. Nice. It's got everything. So that is really going to be an amazing step for me. So this is, sort of the fuel that I needed. Right. So let me let me share a little something with you that I haven't shared with you before and our audience is that through the winter months I have set up my my bike in in the apartment on a because I have a, a trainer that I can take my road bike uh, and set it up on. And of course now with the bat cave set up, I have the bike and I can face my two computer screens and I have downloaded vi cycling videos taken from the point of view of somebody on a bike and I can ride and train along with a virtual ride. Sort of like the Peloton idea, but I get to yes. do it on my own bike. I don't have to buy one of theirs and I, the videos yeah. are all there. And, you know, there's just a subscription for, for videos where you can actually do actual road cycling mm -hmm. tours that you follow along with in the video and, and the cadence changes, the, the, lo the workload changes and everything. So I've been doing that. And, and you're blasting the music? Well, there's music. I, you know, when I when I'm out on my bike, I don't wear headphones because it's not safe to to not be able to hear your surroundings and what's going on around. You, especially if you're riding with other riders. So I tr I train the way I ride. I, I don't train with the music on. I find it actually distracting, to be honest. Well, I understand that Peloton commercial. They're blasting that yeah, music. That would drive really, me nuts. Yeah, they really hit that note with that. Well, I'm glad you're doing it. See, this is the thing that we both are tapped into mm -hmm. at all times. Like this yes. is just in our DNA. Yeah. There's can't change that, right? It'd give me a day that I can't really do what I want to do if I can't stretch or take a part of my workout. Yeah. I'm getting close to miserable. Like that's just not a good day for me. <laughs> I'm gonna get cranky, you know, and we don't want that to you don't want a cranky rah rah. No. And you don't want a cranky rah rah, that's for sure. So hit a button. <laughs> I'm so, glad we shared that together. Yeah, that was, that was great. It was great to do that. And, you know, and it's interesting, you know, how, um, you know, I can't, it, it's, it's bad enough some, in some ways that we are, you know, cooped up a little bit mm -hmm. in our, in our residences and stuff. So to be able to do those things is great. You know, I can't even imagine how um, parents are doing it with, the, with young kids. I mean, they, they've got to be, you know, it's only been a few days, but I can't imagine <laughs> the, the, uh, the energy in the homes, especially with, you know, if you've got more than a couple of kids in your house. So. Well, I want to share something with you. As you know, my gratitude girls partner mm -hmm. homeschooled four children. Right. So when we talk about this, hashtag Lori Tell, we're going to mm -hmm. give her a shout out. Yeah. She will talk about raising her children and homeschooling them, which is really a lot longer than whatever this yeah. is going to be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So there are a breed of parents and people out there who homeschool where this mm -hmm. is a norm. True. true. And, right? I, and I think homes, but I think if the homeschooling and you're actually doing lessons, that's one thing versus, mm -hmm. um, you know, the forced time off, basically. Well, we can create, I'm a systematizing person. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Systematizing and I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, and I'm sure, you know, like I know my, my brother has a couple of girls and my sister has four kids, three girls and a boy. And I'm sure they're, they're planning stuff out as well. And I know, and I think, and I believe that our guest tonight as well has four mm -hmm. kids, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm sure she's mistaken. got some stuff figure, figured out as well. 
This is a real test of how to teach our children what the life of being an entrepreneur is. When you that's get true. up and you work from home, like that's a lesson we can't learn mm -hmm. in school, but we can definitely learn that at home. We're going to learn a lot from, from our guests tonight. Yes. Let's hop on over there and let's hear the gifts that Miriam has to share with us. Okay, great. We'll see you on the other side. Dr. Energy, another beautiful day in paradise. Oh my God, it's amazing. Totally amazing. <laughs> we make it exactly what we want it to be, right? We are the architects of yes. our current, present, future. We design it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I want to talk to you about, about my friend and now our friend and fellow Rotarian and super duper mom and great wife. I want to share a little bit about Miriam Landry with you. I'm going to read some things, but then I'm going to talk a little bit about okay. it. So I'll, I'll do the, uh, you can tell that I'm reading. So I'll, I'll start with some of the statistics in case I don't have <laughs> <number> memorized. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't want to remember that. I want to read it. So Miriam Landry is a sought after speaker at schools nationwide. Miriam is an author of I Can Believe in Myself. I Can Make a Difference, and I Can Be Me, and co-authored The Big Bad Bully with Jack Canfield. Mm. She set a Guinness World Record on May 7th, 2014 mm. for the largest online book discussion in a 24-hour period. Wow. More than 100,000 children and adults participated in this record with the purpose of promoting positive mental health. Miriam's books have also received numerous book awards, including Mom's Choice and Reader's Favorite International. Having successfully navigated the publishing world, Miriam now seeks to mentor aspiring authors and help them achieve their dreams in writing and publishing too. I want to tell you that when I met Miriam, her smile is infectious. Mm. So if you want to catch something, go catch the smile from Miriam. And if you want to spread it, once you have, my, have Miriam smile at you, <laughs> I don't know, that was coming out. But once Miriam smiles at you, you actually smile back and then you can't get the grin off your face. Right. So when you meet her face to face, there's something about what Miriam does. She radiates this joy and happiness. Yes. I want what she takes in the morning, <laughs> if it's possible. Because when I would see Miriam at our rotary meetings, throughout the meeting, no matter where she was, she was always smiling. It didn't matter what we were doing at the meeting. It didn't matter what task we might have had or uh, the Rotarians or guests or members that we were talking to. Miriam was always there and always ready to talk and to be helpful. And I remember thinking... I really want to get to know Miriam. I was so happy that we lived in the same city. Yeah. And, you know, of course it happens, right? You live <laughs> in this, well, for us anyway, we live somewhere and then, you know, poof, we move somewhere else. Yeah. But that, that wouldn't change for me because I have watched and followed, it sounds like I'm a stalker, <laughs> watched and followed Miriam since the day I met her. So I'd like us to put our hands together for Miriam Laundry. Welcome. Welcome, Miriam. Thank you so much for having me here. And what a nice introduction. Of course, uh, there's nothing else I can do but smile after you hear that. <laughs> You do it so well. Do you have you must, when you were a child, did was there a nickname for you or did someone used to say something about your happiness? No, I didn't really have a nickname. The what the one thing that comes to mind is my mother used to say to me, smile with your eyes, smile with your eyes. And I uh -huh. didn't really understand this. She's passed away since. Uh, but I, I always rem remember that smile with your eyes. That's, so I don't know if that has changed anything, but no, no, I just that, remember that. That's awesome. You do and, it. You do it. <laughs> and, and that's, uh, it's funny. Somebody had mentioned that to me about, they saw my passport photo and said, how did you get them to take a picture of you smiling? And I said, I wasn't smiling. I was just let my eyes do the smiling. And it just, yes. you know, when you, so when you smile with your eyes, it really transmits that energy, that, that, um, I don't know, that sense of connection with people. So, right, right. Yeah. 
Well, you do it so well. And I thank you for that because the Mm -hmm. way that you always greeted me has always stayed in my mind's eye. And when I got to see you tonight for a few minutes, I thought that was pretty (laughs) awesome. That's very kind. Thank you. You're welcome. Virtual hug, elbow bump for that. Yes. (laughs) So Miriam, let me ask you about this amazing world record on May the 4th be with you. You had to do it on that day, right? <laughs> it was actually May 7th, but May 2014. Oh, 14, yeah. that's, 14, that's, yes. Yes, oh, okay. that's what you're remembering. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go back to, I'll just start from the beginning and share that. Okay. For me, becoming an author came from, this was taking us back to 2012. I had given birth to my son, Lucas, my fourth child, And the day after that is when everything changed. We learned the news that my niece had died by suicide. And this absolutely changed everything for me because we went straight from the hospital to visit my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And I had this brand new baby. And I just, I felt so guilty to have a fourth child when they had lost their only child. And and what followed from there, the following weeks, I was dealing with, with the loss of my niece and also the baby blues. And I was spiraling into my own little hole. And luckily, my husband noticed this and he suggested that I attend a seminar by Jack Canfield that we had been to the year before. But I went alone this time. I left the baby. He was eight weeks old. I just knew I needed something else. And during the seminar, so it's, it's, a, it's called Breakthrough to Success. And if you can imagine 400 people all working on themselves, so much positivity, so much love, so much hugging, you know, so much talk about the future. I, it, was, it was the best environment for me to be in to change those negative thoughts that were happening in my mind. And all I kept thinking that week was, why weren't these principles, these things taught to us at an earlier age? And all I kept thinking about was my kids and losing my niece and my sister-in-law saying to me that I needed to look for signs of depression in my own children because she said it was hereditary. So I, you can imagine, I was, I kept thinking, there is no way I'm just going to stand around and wait for these signs to appear. I have to do something proactive about it. And on the flight home from that seminar, that's when I wrote the first draft to my first book, I Can Believe in Myself. So everything started from there. And I share this, this, this story about how I started writing because that's what led me to going to wanting to get this Guinness World Record. Right. And that record, and that want wasn't, you know, it wasn't a desire to have a record. My desire was to empower 100,000 children. During the seminar, we worked on goal setting and setting big, hairy, audacious goals. For me, it was I wanted to empower 100,000 children to believe in themselves. And I didn't know how that was going to happen. I had no (laughs) no clue. I'll I'll tell you, as soon as I wrote that goal, I dropped the pen because I was so scared. I was, you know, it was way out of my comfort zone. But when you're in a room of 400 people that are believing in themselves Mm -hmm. and that are, you know, so much positivity, everything and anything is possible. Right. That's when I I decided, okay, I'm going to, if I'm really going to go for this goal, I'm going to have to think bigger. And I decided, okay, something big. This didn't come right away, I have to say. It came after a couple of weeks. I thought, okay, I'm going to go for a Guinness World Record to empower 100,000 children. I need to think big. Yes. Yes. So from there, I worked very hard for the following nine months. And uh, my, the record that I have is the largest online book discussion in a 24-hour period. Wow. Yeah, well, It wasn't awesome. that working nine months to have four children four times wasn't enough. You now have <laughs> another nine months, Miriam, to <laughs> it seems, it seems giving like, birth to this idea. That's right. <laughs> and it thinks that everything's, it seems like everything for me is nine months. It took me about nine months to get each book out, nine months for this Guinness World Record. Yes. I guess things really have to be you know, in the womb and thinking and planning for nine months. Right. You're very maternal about that and nurturing, (laughs) right? I guess, I guess. So so to make $9 million, let it take nine months. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's a great goal. There's a hairy audacious goal for you. Yes, for sure. I know how to be hairy and audacious, let me tell you. (laughs) 
<laughs> you are from New York, right? Yeah, so, I am from New York. Let's oh, I didn't that. know that. Born in Brooklyn. <laughs> so I love that you shared that with us. You know, I'm thinking about all the things that you were saying, and maybe we can take a little dive into Miriam and who you are on a day-to-day basis. Give us an idea, please, and to our audience, what is a typical day in your life? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, a typical day these days is (laughs) self-isolation. But of course, with everything that's happening in the world, I just came back from California, so I'm self-isolating for 14 days. But let's put that part aside. A typical day for me is, (laughs) I mentioned earlier, I I have four children, Mm -hmm. two teenage girls, and then two boys. And um, I wake up at... 5.30, 5.30, 6 o'clock, I spend about an hour and a half just with myself and just working on myself, whatever that may be, right. um, journaling, praying, reading, any of those things until everybody comes down, 7 a.m. and yes. right, getting the kids off to school. And then I start my day working. I work from home and um, it's always about either writing a book helping authors write their books or I go into schools and I do workshops based on the books. Once the kids are home at around 3.30, 4 o'clock, I joke and I say that I am un- I am an unpaid Uber driver. I drive kids <laughs> around all afternoon, different activities, right? <laughs> Volleyball, soccer, hockey, whatever it may be. But every single night I, I am out. So, um, I, you know, the, the things about me that I love are positivity, figuring things out with regards to the mind for myself, how to let right. go of limiting beliefs, and how to help children do the same. Those are my passions. Of course, my kids, and, and I joke around that I drive them around a lot, but I, I enjoy that one-on-one time with each one of them in the car as we're driving. I think right. that's the best time to have real good conversations. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you another question because you are also a wife, Mm -hmm. And you're also a friend. You're also a dedicated person to to Rotary. Can we talk a little bit about the thing? So being a mom, I know it's very, definitely takes up all of your time. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. I'm an unpaid Uber driver. That's really cute. (laughs) (laughs) For my kids, yes. (laughs) Yes, for your children, obviously. Yes. Yes. And so you must obviously know your way around the the hood over there and wherever they're going, if it's in the Niagara, I'm assuming you're going to be in the Niagara region with their yes. activities. Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about you as the, you know, you're such a happy person, and, but maybe we don't want to label you as a happy person, right? We don't want that to be the label. It's just how I feel about you. You radiate this. And I, I really want you to know that it comes through very strong for me. So I'm, I'm happy to share that with you. If you know that it's out there, well, thank you, you are so strong with that. When we text, I can feel it. And that's without talking to you when you were in LA. So let's talk a little bit about how do you juggle being, you know, a friend, a wife, a professional? I understand there are times a day and then you have to do things, but Mm -hmm. maybe you can give some tips to our audience, to our listeners and to your fans who are listening. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, you know, I call myself a a goal geek and I, I truly, truly am. At the beginning of the year, when we're all writing these New Year's resolutions, I, I do love to sit down and plan out my year. So, But I'm not just talking about financial goals or business goals. I, I go into seven areas of my life, including relationships. So what kind of relationships do I want to cultivate this year? So I, I go, I get right in there and say, okay, I want to spend more time with these friends. I want to make so many newer relationships. Uh, I think it's about balancing everything. Right in there, I have monthly date with my husband, better relationship with each one of my children. And for me, it's the way I'm able to balance things. So I'll write down specifically with this daughter, this is my goal with her this year. With this daughter, this is my other goal, Mm. right? So just being intentional about time and what I'm doing every day. Mm, that's great. Those are that's very awesome. good 
good points and you, and you write it down. Now, you have a real fun side to you, Miriam, especially with this Roaring Twenties dress that I recently <laughs> saw you in. Do you want to share? See, you are a lot of fun. Do you want to share? How, how do you do that? How do you get into these Roaring Twenties things? What, what was that all about? Okay. Well, the, the other thing you must know about me is that I love to learn and I love to grow. So I, mm. I put myself in situations like that. I had just attended a conference put on by Rachel Hollis it was a RISE conference in Toronto. Mm-hmm. So she's the author of Girl, Wash Your Face and Girl, Stop Apologizing. Right. I love going to these conferences, seminars, and I go alone because you meet so many great people. You meet so many people I wouldn't be, I wouldn't meet if I was going with a friend, right? Because right. if you yes. go with somebody, you stay with them and you don't need to talk to anybody else. And on the very last evening of this conference, they had a party, the Roaring Twenties party. Oh, nice. Yes. And if I hadn't, didn't have all the costume with me, I mean, you're tired at the end of three full right. days. I was very tempted to not go, but I had the costume. So I thought, oh, this is going to, this is going to be funny. And I love, <laughs> I love to, um, I love to embarrass my kids. <laughs> I think it's a thing. Yes, that's the job of a mother or a father yes. to embarrass their kids. Especially teenage yes. girls. So, of course, I took that photo and I put it on my social media. <laughs> and they were embarrassed. Um, and actually, before I even left for the conference, they were downstairs. My daughter had... Um, a friend who's a boy, they were in another room. And I came down wearing that dress and the necklace and I'm doing like the twenties dance. Oh, it was so funny. She opened (laughs) the door to the room they were in and she saw me and she said, Oh no. And closed the door. (laughs) (laughs) But it's just, anyways, I I do like to have fun like that. And it was a fun party. Yeah, it was, I mean, I didn't stay the full time. I just went for a bit, just wanted to be in that environment and, and then went back. <laughs> well, I appreciate that you shared that because it does show the fun side. And we, we mm-hmm. really like to have fun here as well, here and everywhere that we go. So I thought we could connect our audience to the fun side of you. Now, Miriam, I'm looking at your dedication to your most recent book. And I, and I love that you say, dedication to my children, Serena, Alisa. Aiden mm-hmm. and Lucas, you are my why. Can we talk mm. about that, your why? And then we'll talk about that book, please. Yeah. I think as a parent, we have a big responsibility to do the best we can for our children. And and truthfully for me, they they are my why. They're my reason why I do everything that I do. You know, I was, I I have to say that as a a busy working mom, I, I went through a period in my life where I struggled with that. And I kept thinking, okay, God gave me four kids. It's so busy do I really need to be spending my time working? Because my, we have a, we have another business, a real estate business. And, um, you know, I felt very guilty and I did go on a bit of a a sabbatical almost two years where I just dedicated myself to the kids. But what I noticed is one day when I was talking to my daughter about, no, she mentioned that she never wanted to be a mom. And I said, why don't you want to be a mom? And she said, well, that means I have to give up on my dreams. And I said, why would you say that? And she said, well, you have. And it just, oh mm. my goodness, it just tore me apart. And, and I For really sure. had to reflect on the example that I was, I was portraying to my daughters. And I'm not saying that staying, stay at home moms should not be staying at home. Absolutely not. But, you know, you, you, just, you just know what you're supposed to be doing. And I think they're able to mm. see both sides of it. I just felt that, especially for this daughter, that that's what she was seeing. That even right. though I wanted to do all these things, I was holding myself back. And, and that's not the example I want to give them. Right? I want to show them that a, a woman can do both things if that's what she chooses to do. So they are absolutely the reason, my reason why. Mm. Nice. That's, that's a t- it's, it's a tough one when you've got, my sister is a, has four children as well. It probably sounds yes. like they're about the same ages as your, as your kid. She's got two teenage girls and a young, and then there's about three and a half, four years and then another a girl and a boy. 
mm-hmm. is the youngest. And she's a chiropractor as well. And so, you know, re- balancing the professional life with the home life and, and my brother-in-law and everything, it's, it's challenging. So when you said, when you said uh, one, one date night a month, I was like, I totally get it because I see yes. I see what she goes through. You know what you, to get more than one night a month could be is really super challenging, especially with all the activities with the kids. Exactly, and and we know that it's a phase, right? Like yeah. we we've started mm. counting down. <laughs> not not that we want all the kids out, but you know we we realize that this is the. You think that when they're young, that's when you're the busiest, but I really I believe it's when they're teenagers because right. they depend on us for all the driving. And the hangouts and, you know, the socializing. Yep. So we're aware of this and, and we, you know, one, one day a month to be, um, to go out and, <laughs> and set the intention of having yep. a date is, is even tough as it is, but we know it's not going to last. Like our right. oldest just got her license. Now we don't have to drive her around. Yep. I don't have a vehicle, but I don't have to drive her around. <laughs> so, and now you, she can, now she can be the chauffeur for the other ones. Well, yes, she can, especially, you know, right now. So I, I mentioned that I'm self-isolating because I was on a yep. trip. So she, the kids are not going out a lot, but if they need anything like today, yep. they were doing some crafts, they needed to go to the dollar store. Right. She's the one that went and got them things, mm, nice. right? We needed some groceries the other day. So she went out. So she's helping out a lot more yeah. in that way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. a help. That's yeah. a help. And that gives her responsibility as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And she's a beautiful girl. I mean, I know all your children are beautiful, but Thank I remember. You. I remember. Well, I look at all of your pictures. I'm the one that stares at everything that you do because I want to see your smiles. <laughs> Thank you. I, you're welcome. I wanted to talk about your most recent book, The Big Bad Bully. Mm-hmm. And there is something on page 36 that, like, really, there's so many good parts to it. But I really love the way you have in the new beginning, you're perfect just the way you are. What Mm -hmm. if we looked in the mirror and started to appreciate ourselves? What if instead of pointing out our flaws, we started to look at the greatness in us? Mm -hmm. us? What if we were kind to ourselves? How powerful Mm -hmm. would that be? What do you say when you look in the mirror? This is amazing. Can you talk to us a little bit about this part of the book? Sure. So I, I do have to, I have to, I, I want to share with you what yes. inspired me to write this book. And That's it was my, my oldest daughter was in grade six. She was about 12 years old. And one day she was looking in front of a full length mirror saying things like, oh, mommy, why are my legs so short? Why do I have such frizzy hair? Why do I have so many pimples? And she continued to put herself down and nothing that, I was saying was making her stop, right? None of the things a parent says to them, you're beautiful, you're so great at this and that. None of that was making her stop until finally I went up to her and and I said, stop it, you're bullying yourself. And she went quiet. And I could see that she understood what I was talking about because she does not, I mean, we learn... They learn in schools. We know that bullying is so bad. So the thought that she was doing it to herself was Mm. enough to make her reflect. So once we were done talking that night and um, I did some, I did some work with her about changing her negative thoughts into positive ones. I went up to my room that night and I thought, okay, if she is going through this, then there are a lot of other children and adults, we know that, Mm, adults too, that are going through this, right? It's all the negative self-talk. It's the self-judgment. It's the criticism. It's that negative chatter we have in our minds. So I thought, I I need to write a story about this. And I I had written it, very rough draft. And I don't know if you remember, Rara. I actually, the very first time I met you, it was at a Toastmasters meeting. (laughs) Yes, I do remember. So I had a speech to write at that time. I think it was speech number four that talked about stories and alliteration and metaphors. And I I wrote this, I wrote this, the first draft, and I wrote the the final part of it, which was exactly what you just read. So that was actually first a Toastmasters speech and then later became a book. 
Love it. Wow. Mm. That's awesome. Love yeah. it. Love and and it. it's just about changing that negative self-talk. And what if we looked in the mirror instead, and instead of criticizing ourselves, we started to look for the good in us. So at, at the end of this book, The Big Bad Bully, Jack Canfield, who's my co-author, added self-esteem building exercises. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you had a chance to look at the mirror yes. exercise. It's a powerful, yes. powerful exercise. Mm-hmm. It's a, that's an amazing. I'm so I was so happy to see that in the book as a resource for kids and for the teachers and the parents to do the exercise as well. It was just it was wonderful. Yes, thank you. Well, he every time we finish, um, n- not every time we finish. Pardon me. Every time that we are at a seminar with him, I go to a lot of Jack Canfield seminars mm-hmm. because I learn so much. He gives us homework every night to do this mirror exercise and you do it every night while you're there. And then he challenges us, challenges us to continue for 40 nights, 40 nights so that it becomes a habit. Right. So I do the same when I go into schools, I challenge the kids to do this for 40 nights. And it's very simple. Every night before you go to bed, after you brush your teeth, you stand in front of the mirror and you do four simple things. First, you stand there then you call your name. So you're bringing your subconscious forward. Number two, you appreciate yourself for all the good things that happened that day. So you list your accomplishments, Mm -hmm. your successes, any risks you took, any disciplines you kept, and maybe even some temptations that you resisted. So for me, it could look like, you know, tonight, hey, Miriam, I'm proud of you today for getting up early while the kids were still sleeping and for working on yourself. I'm proud of you for not hitting the snooze button and getting up right away. I'm proud of you for eating healthy. You resisted that extra cookie at lunch. You, know? <laughs> you talk about any risk, any temptations you resisted, any disciplines you kept, maybe you know a child practiced piano or practiced soccer without being asked or the, their homework, right? So you're, you're looking for all the good things about that day. And what we're doing is we are changing those inner negative thoughts into something good. And then through the day, you just get in the habit of noting those things so that you can mm-hmm. bring it back at the end of the night, right? And then step three is to say, I love you to yourself. And we don't do this. That's probably the most awkward thing for people to do. But we really, before we can love other people, before we can be nice to other people, we really have to be nice to ourselves and love ourselves first. Yes. Right. And then finally, just take a deep breath and take it in. So that's something that I I asked my daughter to do that night to do the mirror exercise that night that she was bullying herself. And I've seen such big changes in her. So I I know that it works. Mm, Yes. And I like that at the end, you say thank you to yourself. Yes. And say thank you. Exactly. We don't appreciate ourselves for the good that we do. Right. And there's a lot of the elements of um, Huoponopono, if you're familiar with that, uh, in there as well. It's about, you know, um, it, it's similar in that you thank you, thank yourself and the other person that you may have had a conflict or a disagreement with and, and say, I love you. And, and it's, again, it's all looking eye to eye contact and, and all right. that. Right. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I really, I really like that. And I hope that, that kids and adults do that more, right? It has to become a habit. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a great habit to have. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about it a little bit? I can. Sure. Yes. So the first book that I wrote is I Can Believe in Myself. And so I'll share with you that the first three books, the I Can series, I self-published those books. And The Big Bad Bully, we have a publisher, HCI Books. And what they've done is, so we published The Big Bad Bully and now they're taking, they've taken on my first three books and they're republishing them. So they're coming out The first one is I Can Believe in Myself will get a new makeover. It's going to have new illustrations. And then Jack Canfield's going to add, again, some great self-esteem building exercises at the end of at the end of the book. Nice. And yeah, so I'm really excited about that. That comes out next February. One book a year is, (laughs) is what's happening. And so I Can Believe in Myself is all about letting go of the word can't. Right. Mm, and, right. and that that was my biggest thing after that first seminar. 
how can I teach my kids to let go of that word can't? Because you and I know how important that is. We know that whenever we say, I can't do something, we stop ourselves from even trying. Right. So it just finishes right there. I think it's one of the the most dangerous words in the vocabulary because it, it just limits us so much. If we say I can't, we're not even going to try. And that's the biggest thing that I want kids to get out of that book. When I go into schools, we do an exercise where the kids write all their I can'ts down. And I bring Shreddy. I don't know if you yes. had a chance yeah, to look yeah, at I the lo- book. I, lo- I yeah. love that. That's the one. <laughs> Shreddy is that's a good one. Yes. So Shreddy, I'll just explain, is a, is a decorated yes. paper shredder. And he's a character in the book. So the book is about a little girl who has to get up and speak in front of the class. She has to talk about her show and tell. And she believes that she cannot do it. She keeps saying, I can't, I can't speak in front of the class. So through the story, we see how she comes to the realization that she can and that she she lets go of that word. So I get the kids to write everything that they think they can't do or even just one thing. Mm-hmm. And then I invite them to come up and <sighs> they feed their I can'ts mm. to Shreddy. It's a metaphor for letting go of that I can't. And when you walk out of that gymnasium or wherever I'm, I'm sharing the story, now I challenge them to start saying, I can do it. And it doesn't mean that they're going to magically be able to do it the first time they go for something and right. possibly they could do it the first time. But I, I make sure to tell them that there's three steps to success. I'll just share this with you. Yep. Yes, so this, please is, do. this is in schools that I'm talking about, right? So the first thing is to say, I can, to believe that you can do it. Step two is to ask somebody for help. Find somebody that already knows how to do what you want to do. And I give the example of my daughter when she was in kindergarten. She tried to do a cartwheel. She Mm -hmm. fell and she said, I can't do a cartwheel. I can't. She didn't try again for several years. Mm -hmm. When I read the book to her that day, I, I went to her classroom and I read it. And that day she came home and she said, Mommy, I can do a cartwheel. Watch. And she went to do her cartwheel and she fell. But what was different this time is that she got back up and she said, I can do a cartwheel. And she practiced and practiced. It took her two weeks, but she got her cartwheel. And during that time, so step two is she found somebody that knew how to do a cartwheel, which was our our babysitter who taught gymnastics. And she asked her for help, right? You find somebody that knows how to do what you want to do and ask them to help you. And then step three is to practice and practice until you can get it done. So after two weeks, she was able to get that, to do that cartwheel. Right. And we can, I mean, put, write a bike without training wheels instead of a, do a cartwheel. You can put, write a book instead of the cartwheel, right? It all starts with first believing that you can do it. And then you, love you figure out the rest. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. I love the... Actually, I like the pictures that you have. I yes. love the way the kids at the bottom. <laughs> the last page. I can speak in front of the class. I can climb. I can swing. I can tie my shoelaces. I think that's very powerful. Mm-hmm. And it it kind of goes along with the you know we've both Catherine and I are really fond or fond is probably not strong enough a word of the Richard Branson quote about mm. when somebody asks you if you can do something, just say yes and then figure out the how afterwards. Exactly. Right? Yes. And it was, it was Henry Ford also said, whether you think you can or can't, can't you're right. you are mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely, you're, you're right. This is such a good, this book is great for the parents to be able to realize, like you said, I don't have to even say this, it's obvious, to empower their children. Yes. And I don't know if you noticed in that book, there's a little, there's a little teaching for the adult too. Yes. We have Mrs. Ruby that says <laughs> she <coffee>. can't, <laughs> yes, she yes. can't make it through can't the morning without, without coffee. coffee. Yes. And I thought that was great. I even like the wink in her eye, when, even though when she does it, it's kind of gives mm-hmm. a second <laughs> Now, Miriam, I want to ask you a question about something else that might be on the horizon or perhaps a new focus or something that you're going to be doing that you haven't maybe told anyone yet. You want to tell us a secret? Okay, sure. Well, it's it's something very new. It's not it's yeah. not a secret. Okay. So I my goal with writing children's books is to empower children. That's always been my goal. But as I shared, really what I what I can do is put out one book a year. That's the reality of of how publishing works. So now I'm helping other 
aspiring authors who have empowering stories for children get those books out there. So I'm currently mentoring six authors to finish writing their book, to help them edit it, you know, to make it the best that it possibly can be, and then taking them through every step along the way until we publish their books. And my company, Laundry Books, will be publishing their book at the end of this year mentorship. So I'm really focusing on that. Again, I'm doing another round of authors that were starting in June. So I'm looking for people that have an inspiring, empowering story that they want to put out there. And I know I know through the years of being an author, so many people have contacted mm-hmm. me. I have an idea. I have a book. I don't know what to do next. Mm-hmm. So this is the time to get that manuscript out of an old drawer or out of their computers, mm-hmm. dust it off and, and submit it. So, so that's, this is really a passion of mine. I think we can reach more children having more great books out there that are really teaching them life lessons. And, and for me, a lot of them have to, have to do with the way they're talking to themselves, the things they say. It's the things that I'm learning now as an adult that I have to go back and clean up, right? It's all those mm-hmm. limiting beliefs that have formed from childhood, Right. But I think we really need to get to to people when they're kids. Right. Right. Before their their self-concept has finished forming, when their self-esteem is building, I think that's the time that we really need to be talking to kids about all of these things. Yes. It's it's so important to help them build. You know, I always say, you know, with chiropractic, it's it's easier to build a child than to fix an adult. Yes. So if we can help them build a solid foundation when they're younger, there'll be less to fix as they get mm-hmm. older. Exactly. So there's um, there's a study Hopefully. I was just reading. No, and, and you're absolutely right. I was just reading. Let me just tell you this quote. It says, low self-esteem is a thinking disorder mm-hmm. in which an individual views him or herself as inadequate, unlovable, or incapable. And once this is formed, this negative view permeates every thought. Yes producing faulty assumptions and ongoing self-defeating behavior. And this starts young. So, so that's, that's my goal. Is that that your quote? No, it's not my quote. It's a study that was done on low self-esteem that came out in psychology today. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. There's, there's, and one other part of what I, what I really loved about your mission is, and this is what one of my mentors said to me, who I learned some, some of my chiropractic from that they can only, uh, put their hands on and adjust so many people. And, you know, so by teaching other chiropractors to do what they do, they're actually reaching more people. So the same for you, yes. that you're helping other authors get their message out is, is furthering your mission. Cause you can, you know, affecting the seven people closest to us, you will affect seven people close to each to them, et cetera, et cetera. Right. It multiplies very quickly. Yeah. And I agree. And I think we all have good intentions, but we don't know how to do things. I wish I could have found, it was hard to publish the first book. Like it was really, really hard because there's not, you know, there aren't people that are telling you how to do it, that are helping you. You don't go to school for that. Mm -hmm. So, so that was hard figuring it out. Right. So we want to be there to support other people and being able to help just like the chiropractor. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of the ripple effect. <clears throat> it's exactly that. And Miriam, this is a really good time in, in our show. I'd like to talk about the things that we receive from one another. Dr. Energy and I like to refer mm-hmm. to this as the BU moment. If there was so much going on between us. I'll give you a second or five seconds to think about <laughs> it. <laughs> I'll explain what it is. So the BU moment is where we will go around the room. We'll start with you because you're our guest. And then we'll go to Dr. Energy. And then Dr. Hmm. Energy will ask me. And we'll talk about what your BU moment, maybe for lack of a better word, we can use it as our takeaway or we can share something that came up. It wasn't something that we knew was going to happen. It just, it appeared. Mm -hmm. So would you be kind enough to share with us your BU final moment? Sure. Thank you. So for me, BU really represents being who you are meant to be in the world, right? For me, it's yes. it's writing books, empowering children. I can see from the two of you is, I mean, this is a gift that you have, being able to interview people, to ask people, but I can only imagine how you help Dr. Energy mm-hmm. <laughs> through your chiropractic treatments, through the energy that you're able to to give other people, right? You're in that 
you're in that, you're a safe person mm-hmm. to talk to. And I would say for you, Rara, it's it's about being yourself. I mean, you said such great things about <laughs> me, but mm-hmm. when you would come into those rotary meetings, you would light up the room. Absolutely. I think uh, <laughs> that's just your personality. That's the energy around you. So it's it's so nice to see, so nice to see. And you were always a welcoming face. You were always smiling. Um, be you to me is is being your authentic self and doing in the world what you're you're meant to do, mm-hmm. overcoming the fear, the negative self doubts, all these things that happen to us in order to go ahead and live the life that we're meant to live. Thank you, thank you That's so much. Awesome. That is awesome, Doctor Energy. Yeah, would you like to share with us your be you final moment? Absolutely, um, it, it really coalesced. There, I read at the end for me when Miriam, when you said about um, overcoming the fears and doing things, and to me, that's really what courage is: is we feel the fear, and we, as John Wayne said, we saddle up anyways. Mm-hmm. We, you know, you feel the fear, and then you go ahead and do it anyways. And I think that is one of the the lessons that if we can teach our children our nieces, our nephews, whomever, and our brothers and sisters and husbands and wives as well, for that matter, um, to look at the fear and then go ahead and do the things that we're afraid to do anyways. It will create more resilient people in the world, which is what we really need, especially right now. Mm -hmm. So thank you for for bringing that to light. Awesome. And Rara, how about you? What's your... Be you final moment, takeaway, message, sharing. Thank you. What really resonated with me was when Miriam, you when you spoke about talking to your daughter and saying, stop bullying yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My be you final moment is you recognized, listened, and responded as a brave parent that took bravery that really did because you didn't probably know how she was going to respond to that. But the fact that you did that and your daughter responded to you, that really inspires me to ask parents and siblings to listen to one another because had you not been listening, we would not have that book in our hands. And by your wonderful skill set of listening and your bravery to step into that with your daughter and her bravery to follow your lead, that is an amazing interaction. I thank you so much for sharing that moment with us. We would not know why that book is here. And that moment shows me, you know, not a light, it shows me an entire 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it as like, a, what's that? The um, uh, the, the big uh, lights on the islands that for the ship's uh, lighthouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. That's that, kind of, that kind of light showing people the way. Right, right. And I just feel like there was different energy all around when you stood up and you said that to her and how she received it and processed it and how you both took action and spoke Mm -hmm. about it that night. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is amazing. Our audience, they'll they'll know how to reach you. We're going to put all our show notes, all the details in the show notes. Is there something that you would like to say about the quickest way you'd like to be reached? They can read it, but maybe you have something that you want to say to our audience beforehand or how how can you want to give them your home phone number, your (laughs) cell phone? (laughs) You just, you Put it out there. <laughs> well, the best thing to do is go to my website and then my information is there. Please reach out if, if you have a book that you want to put out into the world, especially I think that's the best way that we can help even more children. Just contact right. me and let me know. And um, and just a reassurance that we're all doing the best that we can. And it's, it's really, you know, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're a working mom, we are all doing the best that we possibly can for mm. our kids. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank we you appreciate you being here. Mm. Yes. Thank you. And to our audience and to our guest and yes. to you, Dr. Energy. Yes. Ciao for now. Oh, ciao, babies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Sharing is caring. 
Tell your friends about conversations worth having on BU Network. We really appreciate your reviews. Thank you. For show notes and links, go to www.b-u.network forward slash podcasts. Connect with us via our website, www.b-u.network, and build a relationship with us. Sign up to receive updates and your free video training at www.b-u.network forward slash pro. We're looking forward to hearing from you. And thank you for being with us. Ciao. Ciao, babies.